What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. This time, we're tackling a fairly controversial topic, and it feels like we're the only channel on YouTube that actually feels this way. So, I guess it kind of makes us the bad boys of Overwatch, the, the rebels, the, those few standing that actually believe and feel your pain when we talk about ELO Hell. Now, I think it's true. I think it's more unhealthy to pretend that ELO Hell doesn't exist than to tell everybody else that no, everything is fine, calm down, <laughs> ignore the elephant in the room. I don't like that attitude at all. I think it's much better that we're honest about the state of the game so that we can improve it rather than tell everyone that just look within yourself. All you have to do is, is look at yourself, as if people automatically aren't doing that already. Now, it is important for me to note that the way we on the channel, because we all three agree on this, define ELO Hell is different than what everyone else seems to be assuming it means. So before you jump into the comment section telling me how I'm wrong six ways sideways, hear my argument out and then comment. Now, first and foremost, let's just point out what's on the screen right now. We're in a situation where we have Zen as a healer picked already, and randoms, people that aren't coordinated in our group, right? We're in a three stack. Obviously, we're going to be trying to coordinate together, are picking DPS carry roles without us. This happens to us all the time. All the time. And you can come to our Twitch page, where we stream at least five days a week, sometimes even seven, to see this happen to us in real time. People pick carry roles that are like team defining and just expect everyone else to form around them. And this is at diamond level. And I would say at the diamond rank, you're starting to get out of ELO hell. There people usually know how to play their characters mechanically. But the difference is once you get up into the master's rank, then sometimes the mechanics are just as good, if not worse, but the team play is so much better. And that's the defining factor that there's a distinct difference in matchmaking. This has always been the case in the old matchmaking. I felt it was above 65 and in the current set masters and above the players there work as a team and coordinate and are willing to change the comp. They don't have this attitude of like, if my Widowmaker's not working, I'll just change. Because they understand, if you're playing on defense, you don't have a chance to just make a big risky pick all of a sudden. Because you get like one life on defense, and if it doesn't work, you lost the point. And you completely lost your opportunity to full hold. You have to pick the best comp possible from the first go. You don't have all these risks to take. And if you don't know that principle, well, you might be in ELO hell. You might be causing it. You might be stuck at a rank because you're not actually growing as a player and learning the team game, which is what I actually want, right? Just for some understandings of what the role should do in team play, things that people at higher ranks know as a given. Now, I said I was gonna define ELO hell. Let me do that right now. The way we define ELO hell, I don't think anybody would contest with. We don't think that you can't get out of a bad rank. That's not what we're saying at all. In fact, I made a video on how to escape ELO Hell, where you're in a bad rank where teams don't coordinate and they pick too many DPS and horrible comps. How do you adjust to that? That'll be linked at the end of the video on the end card, escaping ELO Hell. So obviously I don't think you can't escape it. So I don't know why there's an assumption that when we mention ELO Hell or anybody mentions it, that people are saying the game is broken in a way that I can't overcome. That's not the point. The point is that because everyone plays in that selfish way without understanding team dynamics or not even caring about them or even worse, purposefully being uncooperative in a game that's all about cooperation, that is the hell. If you admit that exists, in our opinion, you must admit that ELO hell exists. Why? Because those games are hell! Playing that way is not fun. It's not fun, nor is it constructive. It's not the type of game that we want to play. It's not even Overwatch, even. It's a whole separate meta that we dub like the solo queue meta. The meta where everyone just picks whatever they want personally, rather than trying to coordinate as a team. That's not what Overwatch is to us. That's not what we want it to be. But there's this huge chunk of players that that's how they treat the game. And if you get stuck in those ranks, the games are hell thus dubbing the phrase ELO hell. If you're in those ranks, your games are going to be rough. And if you don't think that, try playing Mercy and ranking up in those games. Play a perfect Mercy. I want to see a pro player play Mercy and have these players that don't understand team coordination carry that Mercy player out because there's only so many impact plays you can make as Mercy. You can play flawlessly, but if your team isn't coordinating in the right way to win the game, you're just going to lose. Furthermore, this leads into a bigger problem with these auto-select DPS players 
that they might not even know, but Blizzard props them up in their rank, because even if they win 50-50, they are going to get more rank than the support that also wins half their games. This is why that whole rating system of, like, each player gets a different amount of points is wrong. It should just be the entire team gets the same amount, win or lose, because in no way is the metrics that Blizzard is using to determine who did what in the game actually working correctly. Because how could it? How could they know the impact of the plays that you made? We've already discussed on this channel trash damage versus impact frags, the gold medal fallacy. What metrics are they taking to know if you're actually playing properly as a team? Because your big team plays carry the game, not your stats. So it doesn't make any sense for people to get individual ranks. It should just be normalized across the six players. And this might just fix everything. This might put these players who are always picking DPS, especially DPS characters that aren't even viable really, or require the rest of the team to just form around them and protect them to have them get any value. They might actually be able to be pushed down into the rank where they belong for throwing games. But instead what happens is in the solo queue meta, most teams play uncoordinated. They stand at choke points. They don't understand how to make a break for ground or to trade out or to push together in a death ball or dive comp with Lucio speed boost. Don't want to do any of that. Instead, there's just a bunch of spam battles back and forth and it ends up being whichever team has the most accidental synergy, meaning that they just happen to ult at the same time or they focus fire the same thing accidentally without calling. It just magically happens. They win. They push on, they win the game, and they think they did things right. Meanwhile, they're not actually learning any of the necessary skills about the fundamentals of the game, about basic rules of Overwatch that we call basic, and a lot of you guys call basic in our, our comment section, but a lot of people don't understand. That's one problem that we have when we make our advanced guide series that... Not many people, but some go in our comment section and say, oh, this stuff is basic. Everybody knows this, which isn't the case at all. Because if you played in the sub 3000 rank, it's not ubiquitous. Not everybody knows this stuff. Not everybody knows the basic philosophy of how you're supposed to play each class. I mean, like for instance, in this gameplay on offense, we had two hit scan players. Yet, for some reason, the Faro was able to stay alive the entire time, which doesn't sound possible in my brain. When I see two teammates that have hit scans, my assumption is that the Faro is going to have a horrible day. But if you play for yourself and don't actually understand what your role is, the entirety of the responsibilities that you take on when you pick a character, which is sort of my That Hero is Easy fallacy video, where I talk about how Lucio should learn how to call for team initiation and disengage, because he's kind of in charge of that. Same thing with hit scans. If you don't know that you're the only thing that can hit Farah in the air, so she should die immediately when she jumps up, you're not playing the fuller team game. You're just playing your own game and tunneling in on what you want to do. And the long and short of it is, those of you that do know the game that are learning either through watching YouTube videos or watching pros If you go in and play with those players, you are going to have a bad time It is going to feel like hell thus ELO hell does exist because there's a massive knowledge gap between the actual roles of all of the characters team play and synergy and the community who oftentimes play for themselves now this isn't a doom and gloom video that's why I put in the title that I want to fix it I do want to fix it I don't want this to be the case I think no matter what there's going to be some ranks where people don't understand these things why would they understand them it's gonna take time to learn but it feels like the majority of the ranks are that way until you get into the top two so how do we fix it? I think the only answer is through time and education, through YouTube channels, through the pro scene getting bigger. As time goes on, I would hope that we can educate everyone so that ELO Hell is pushed down to the bottom ranks, and instead, the limiting factor for those middle ranks is mechanical skills, not knowledge. Because that's a game I'd much rather play. I'd much rather have teammates that just can't perform the actions as well, but understand them and coordinate and are willing to swap in order to correct the comp. That's the game I want to play, and I think that's the game you want to play. I don't want to play this everyone picks DPS and whoever picks last has to pick healer. That's not the game I want to play. And if you want evidence of this, all you have to do is go to our stream, because this happens to us all the time, and we deal with it. We're making calls. We're making the correct calls. We're trying to work as a team, and it just doesn't work, which is why I had to make the How to Escape You Low Hell video, because we had to completely rediscover how to play in that solo queue meta. And when I say solo queue meta, I don't mean 
we're solo queuing. I mean, they're solo queuing. When you get random teammates who are just solo queuers, they have this individualistic mentality of the game sometimes. And if they don't, I add them and try to get them on our team because I want to have a six stack. But one reality is that I think these other YouTubers just play the game too much or play in six stacks with their friends and say, oh, Yoloha doesn't exist. Playing in a six stack is marvelous. The competition of the game goes way up at all ranks. The game plays perfectly at that level because you have friends to communicate with. But what I'm saying is I wish the randoms we got, because that's how I would be if I was, when I solo queue, I want to coordinate with people. Why don't more people want to do that? Why don't more people respect that that's the case in this game and you can't play it another way? And if you do, it turns the games into a hellish experience. I can't see a way you can dispute this. We actually had a game on Hanamura. For those of you that know how to play the game, this is going to be as clear as day. We got queued up with three random teammates who thought the best way to play the game was to stand on the choke point on offense, spamming into the Reinhardt shield. Keep in mind, they did not have some Reinhardt break strategy. They didn't have a Roadhog, a Bastion, or some or a Junkrat, or things that could spam the Reinhardt. No, we had Soldier, McCree, and Zarya standing at the choke, thinking they're going to win the Reinhardt shields battle of course they don't and we get wrecked meanwhile i'm trying to call us the speed boost through the choke take space take ground take the fight to them and at least trade one for one so that you have respawn advantage and blah 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 yeah, people who know the game know all this stuff and i have no problem teaching it but the guy shouts back at me why aren't you healing what are you doing why am i always on speed boost well, within five seconds of coming to the choke, why are you getting hit? We have a Rhine shield up. There's no way you know what a coordinated team looks like if you're calling for heals in the first five seconds of the engagement. You have to stay behind the Rhine shield and go through the choke as a coordinated team. I'm calling for that. I'm telling you which way we're going to go. I'm booping their Rhine out of the way. We have all this space and you're complaining that you don't have healing. Meanwhile, when I did have amp again, I did switch it to healing. But if you think Lucio was supposed to stay on healing the entire time, you don't understand the biggest power Lucio has, which is a coordinated speed boost to overwhelm the enemy team. Offense has the advantage. If they just trade one for one, they're going to win. You focus fire their healers. They'll be in spawn. The next push that you have, they won't have healers. You'll have six. You win the point for free. Boom, you win. But if you just stand at the choke the whole time, and that's the only way you've ever played the game, mind you, because I insulted his game sense, he was apt to tell me, but I have a thousand games played. Right, at mid-tier matchmaking, I wonder why. Why do you have so many games played and not ranked up to masters yet? I don't have a thousand games played, I have a full-time job. And I make all these YouTube videos, I don't have time to just sit and play the game all day, and then maybe I would be masters rank. That exactly is the thing I want to change. I'm watching how the pros play and adapting it to the game. He's watching how it works at mid-tier matchmaking for a thousand games, and yelling at me for not conforming to the mid-tier matchmaking bad way to play. That is ELO hell. And it's to the point where I just can't play Lucio then. I shouldn't really be on Lucio anyway. I mean, no offense, but I play a lot of other heroes that are harder to play much better. I just want to win so bad that I'm willing to try to play Lucio and Shot Call. But if you don't listen, there's no point. I might as well play solo queue heroes that are more self-sustaining, like I explained in the Escape Your Low Hell video. The only way to coordinate with that is to just play selfishly too and do the most that you can, which is not Overwatch. That's not how the game's supposed to be played. And if you agree that's not the way it's supposed to be played, then ELO Hell does exist. Because there's entire tiers of matchmaking where that is the default. Ah. Guys. Guys. Can we come together on this? I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be real with you. Because I'd rather tell you the truth, the way I see it, help you improve and make the community better rather than be dishonest and say everything is fine, ignore the elephant in the room. That's not how we want to run things here. We want to give you quality advice. We actually value that. We're passionate about this game. I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt. I want to make you better from watching our channel. We really care about this stuff. So don't take it as an insult if I'm telling you the way you play the game is wrong and you need to adapt and learn. I mean, that's how games work. You look at the highest levels of play and you boil it down to fundamentals. It works like that in every sport, every esport, every competitive game that exists. And Overwatch is one of the most competitive games there is. Don't let them lie to you and say it's some casual game. That's not the case, and I think you guys know that. <sighs> what a rant, huh? Guys, if you have things to say, please say them in the comments below. We do read through them. Try to be nice to each other in there. But let me know what you think. 
If you like our content, please subscribe. We upload each and every day. Go follow our Twitch page. As our videos go live, our Twitch goes live. And you can see the stuff we talked about today in action. Also, on Fridays, each and every week, we just started it this past Friday, I'm doing a Coach Frito series where you can send in your gameplay for me to review on stream. You can email gameplays into youroverwatchplays at gmail.com. Or you can tweet them to us. Which, by the way, you should be following us on Twitter. That's the best place to check when we're going live as well. You can see a feed of our videos, as well as interact with us and see other cool stuff we post. On Twitter, we're at YourOverwatchYT. That's been it for me for today. I've been Frito for Your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.